Today, we see the Lucid Air Dream Edition do a 70 mile an hour range test, and the number is big. It's really big. Uh, Cybertruck photos get leaked online, and Panasonic will start making Tesla's new batteries in 2023. Well, those stories and a lot more coming up on the new EV News Briefly, uh, your daily rapid fire insight into the world of electric cars and how we power them. I'm Martin Lee, and I've been through every EV story so you don't have to. I'm like a TLDR of the EV world. The regular EV News Daily podcast can continues as always podcast 1351 will be out later today when we'll have more time 25 30 minutes to discuss as always today's ev news in depth but for the first ev news briefly we have an amazing story to kick off this new format of show uh, which is the lucid air dream edition 70 mile an hour range test done by my buddy tom malogny we knew it was going to be a big number epa range 520 miles but the only question was when you drop Drive one of these at 70 mile an hour, as Tom did, with a rather nice looking white one. And uh, how far at a constant 70 can you go? Well, we now have the answer. Uh, Tom did it in a Lucid Air Dream Edition. Um, 19 inch aero wheels on this EPA range 520 miles and temperature about 51 degrees Fahrenheit 10 and a half degrees Celsius and the answer was 500 miles just a touch over 500 miles consumption rate was a consistent 4.3 about 4.2 kilowatt hours it dropped to on occasion He pulled 117 kilowatt hours from the air's battery. Uh, Lucid say it has 118 kilowatt hours. But either way, this is just a huge piece of news and a fantastic uh, piece of news as well for the EV world to be able to go out there and say real world highway 70 mile an hour range test done. 500 miles is just a huge number uh, to go to the market with. And congratulations to the team at Lucid for pulling that one off. Next, Cybertruck photos have been leaked uh, by the Cybertruck forum online. The car looks, the truck looks pretty similar to what we've seen before. You know, experts that study these things, the dimensions apparently are a little bit different around the front, but I think it's a difference in the photograph and the angle of the lens. The wing mirrors, the door mirrors, obviously on because well, they have to be legally, but maybe they'll be uh, removed. The wiper is just huge. It's the driver's side, and uh, they say it extends as well. As for the frunk, well, again, it's difficult without seeing any kind of proper photo. Maybe the whole thing lifts up like a clamshell. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe it is just the uh, just the way the photo looks. Charge port will be on the rear, but I can't see it in these photos. Of course, the door handles are missing, uh, which was the big rumour. The wheels are not the um, aero wheels we've seen before. These look like uh, Model 3 aero wheels with the covers taken off. Of course, later on this week, we get to find out the... Uh, details hopefully on Cybertruck with Elon making a return to the earnings call on Wednesday. Next in the news, Panasonic will start making the Tesla 4680 cells from 2023. This is a report which comes via Nikkei Asia and is literally just a one-liner. It is that Panasonic will start mass production of the new 4680 cells from 2023 to compete with uh, their South Korean and Chinese battery rivals. It literally is a one-line story at Nikkei Asia. Nothing more to say on this apart from we're, everything's pointing uh, to next year on this and Tesla will need all hands to the pump not only making the cells themselves but others as well fantastic Bloomberg article which I recommend you read I'll put the details in the show notes of the long podcast later Tesla's factory in Fremont California making an average of 8,550 cars a week that's more than Toyota's juggernaut in Kentucky which is just under 8,500 BMW South Carolina plant 8343 and Ford's Dearborn Michigan plant which is 55 Six four, according to a Bloomberg analysis of production data from more than 70 manufacturing facilities. It's a fantastic article that goes into with uh, a lot of depth and also some interactive graphs and things that you can click on. We're discussing this story in full on the podcast a little bit later about how Tesla compares to their big rivals. 
A story that dropped on Friday, I just missed it to get in the end of last week's podcast. General Motors investing $6.5 billion in two Michigan sites to create 4,000 new jobs in the state, according to a meeting agenda. And two sources familiar with the situation, writes the thedetroitnews.com. This is all to do with uh, the news getting out just before Governor Gretchen Whitmer's State of the State address, uh, highlighting some of the economic development efforts, says the Detroit News, and those incentives to get GM and and, of course, their battery partner, LG, in this case, to be uh, investing in jobs and local manufacturing. An exclusive Reuters report pointing out that Renault, Nissan, Mitsubishi, part of that alliance, uh, have some big EV news coming out later this week. We think on Thursday plans to triple their investment to jointly develop electric vehicles. Two people with knowledge of the plan telling a Reuters report. On Thursday, we expect to hear news about an investment of uh, more than 20 billion euros over the next five years with new platforms coming as well, which the three-firm alliance will develop their cars on. That makes total sense because these uh, EVs that are going to be coming out, whether it's a Nissan Aria, Renault Megane EV, to the general buying public, it just doesn't matter what platform it sits on. We want these prices to uh, reduce, uh, battery prices to go down. And for the kind of cars, you know, if you think about the Nissan Micra being a very small segment car, getting the price down on that. 9to5Mac reporting that in the latest edition of Bloomberg's newsletter from Mark Gurman, he's saying that Apple's lost another senior manager from Project Titan. That is the self-driving car project, Apple's self-driving car, that they won't comment on. They never do comment on future product releases, but uh, he was the head of software engineering program management for Apple's car team, leaving the company, uh, says this report. They come and go on the Apple car in terms of when it will be released, if ever. You know, I just don't think Apple should be making uh, an, an, an EV. Make the software, make control systems, make the self-driving autonomy stuff. But I don't know, it's such a subjective thing, isn't it? It's one thing making a, a small, shiny, good-looking piece of glass and metal to hold in your hand, but a car is a different ball game. I know the automotive industry is also you know, a big industry to tap into, but hey, I'm not so sure Apple should be moving forward with this. A rumour coming out of the UK's car magazine from the Lamborghini chairman and CEO, Stefan Winkleman, uh, saying that the next Lamborghini will be a plug-in hybrid model. In 2023, they'll follow up the Aventador. A V12 engine, of course, which is of less interest to me because we're burning stuff, but it will be a plug-in hybrid. And the only thing we have at the minute is a spy photo to look at, which does look like the car's been covered in a grey fitted bed sheet. So really not much to look at on this. But it kind of makes sense. It gets to make all the noise and drama of a Lambo, uh, but also have some plug-in power as well. I guess that makes sense. And finally, some news coming out of China. Shanghai's mayor saying that they want to invest heavily in semiconductor production, new chip fabrication. We've seen recently with the shortage of automotive chips that there's a big market there for anyone that can solve those problems. More chips requiring wafer fabrication plants cost billions of dollars and years to construct. But if anyone can do that in record time, that would be uh, China and the Shanghai government rolling out new incentives to attract talent and firms to the semiconductor supply chain as well. Well, thank you very much for watching the first EV News Briefly. I haven't got a stopwatch running on this, so I, I get the feeling it was probably too long for what should have been uh, a, a five-minute update on today's EV News. We'll get better at this new format, I promise. Thank you very much for watching today. Catch me later for the full EV News Daily. I'll see you then.